Okay, play through three. Hi, everybody. I'm going through this game, which seems like a lot quicker than I expected. I'm also enjoying it a lot more than I thought, so that's really positive. Um, despite not a fan of the graphic, graphic approach, I prefer something more cartoony, like, say, Deponia, or uh, Book of Unwritten Tales. You see nothing important here now. I'm walking around to explore the area before I actually go into it. It's the real estate man. He looks angry with you. Hello. Are you still in the bit? Jared? How dare you come back to Brooklyn? This is the East River. The warehouse was built a bit before you left Brooklyn. There's a man sitting on one of the park benches. Hi, can I help you? That's nice. These signs read, keep off the grass. The floor is made of wooden planks with wide cracks between them, but there is nothing beneath them which might be interesting. Really? No gold coins? You see nothing? When you were a young boy, just after moving to Brooklyn, your father built this house with his own two hands. It makes you sad to think of how beautiful this house was when you sold it. Now its condition is... All the houses in this neighborhood used to have a fine yard. Now not so much. It looks like someone must have lost a pair of spectacles. As you pick them up, you're very grateful you can see well enough without having to wear This house on the corner is Leonard's house. You notice the shutters on the windows are closed. You also see that the fence is not This is where Leonard, your former next door neighbor, Formerly fine houses lined these residents. Hey Rand, we met a long time ago. People like you make me so angry. You see nothing important here now. You only see one other person in the bank. A man is working behind the teller's window and the bank manager's office is empty. You still consider that office to be Mr. Quayle's office. Hello, my name is Jared Wilson. I would like... All right. Jared Wilson, you say? Well, the fact of the matter is that I'm John Gossett. We're shorthanded today, so I'm working the teller's window. I don't ask anyone to do a job I'm not willing to do. Hello, Mr. Gossett. It is a pleasure. Certainly. 
The pleasure. Hello. All right. Hello, Miss. Certainly. I am a friend of Mr. Quail. He told me you would appreciate this gift from California. I. Oh my. This is a very fine wine. How could you have possibly known? It is clear to me that you are a friend of Mr. Quail's. I think I can trust you. You can find him at Leonard B. Hughes' house. But please don't tell anyone else where he is. He's hiding there because Tweed's gang has been trying to keep him quiet. Hi, Jared. You only see one other person in the bank. This is water. This is where Leonard, your former next door neighbor, this house on the corner is Leonard's house. You found these spectacles among garden plants in the front yard of the house of... This is the back door. Hi. I yes. But okay. This is the last letter Mr. Quail sent you in California. In it, he... This weatherproof box contains evidence against... You see nothing... The stores don't... This is one of the... Who are you? Hi. That's nice. Here, take this. It should be enough to- Your kindness overwhelms me, sir. It has been so hard for me since I lost my job at the newspaper. You're very welcome. It's no problem at all. I'm very glad to help. Yes, you're correct. I worked in circulation, selling papers on the street until 1848. When one of our journalists resigned, I was given the chance to write. The editor liked my work. He hired... Yes, I believe we have. My name is Jared Wilson. And if I'm not mistaken, I'm the journalist you spoke of. I res... My name is Nicholas Matthews. I can't believe this. I thought I recognized you. When I was young, I read all... Well, what happened? When things started going bad here, the editor would not publish my articles telling the truth about William Tweed's political corruption. And I refused to write articles that spun the... 
Well, I certainly admire the courageous. It would have been easier to leave, but since I've been discredited, Tweed's gang doesn't consider me a threat. But given a chance, I would publish articles that would... Yes, that would be nice. I'm not sure what to do. I... The current owner of the paper, your old boss, Caleb Wiest, knows he's doing wrong, but doesn't have the courage to take a stand against the corruption. He is... Ah, now we... I will go by the newspaper office, and I will fire the current editor. I want you to be the... Hello. All right. His office is... Hello, Mr. Wiest. It has been a long time since we talked. My name is Jared Wilson. Oh, Jared... Jared Wilson. Ah, uh, well... Yes, I'm sure you remember. I was a journalist here until 1848. Then... I went west, to California, to find my brother. And yes, now I have returned. Uh, and I suppose you've seen the articles in the paper about you? And I suppose you're here for an explanation? Yes, I suppose that would be a very good place to start. A lot has happened here. A lot of things out of my control. If I could, I would go away. I'd just sell the paper and go away. Well, that is interesting. That is very interesting. I'm just speaking hypothetically here, but what would you say if you learned someone like me was interested in buying the paper? Hmm, I've thought about it. Unfortunately, I would have to get a much larger sum of money than someone like you. That is to say, someone in your position could afford. I'm sorry. I know this puts it out of your reach, but I'd have to get something around $35,000. I know that sounds like a lot to you, Jared. I'm sorry, but I can't sell it for any less. I'm sorry. That's too much money for you, Jared. It would have to be all cash or a secure banknote. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Hi, Jared. I need a banknote for 37... Not a problem at all. I know, of course, that amount only scratches the surface of your account here. Here's a Brooklyn banknote for exactly $37,000. Thank you, sir. It is a pleasure doing business with you. Did not change. I could have sworn 35. I'm sorry. I know this puts it out. I'm sorry. This is a bank note issued by the Brooklyn Bank. The bearer is entitled to deposit the amount of $37,000. That's equal to about 801,300 current US dollars. Here is a bank note for the $35,000 you agreed to, plus an additional $2,000. I'm giving you the extra $2,000 to say thank you, because I came here willing to pay double what you agreed to. Have a very nice day, Wiest. Well, now. Well, that's a very, uh, evil... <laughs> that's a gloating way to close a negotiation.
Hello. I don't know if you've... Oh, you bought the newspaper? Hello. My name is Jared Wilson. Yes, Jared Wilson. I'm sure you have heard of me. I just purchased the Brooklyn Evening Star, and that makes me your new boss. I'd like to thank you for all of your hard work in the last few years. Now, with that being said, you're fired. I'll just stay right here while you take your things out of the desk and leave the building. Uh, oh, um, okay. You see nothing imp- This is the off- You started working here as a- You noticed- Um... Okay... This is the off- You started- You noticed- You used to go through this door to go up the stairway to the upper floor. The animation is blocked, which is preventing me from moving. Here I am, Mr. Wilson. I'm ready to get to work. Now that you are the new owner of the Brooklyn Evening Star, you discuss with Nicholas how you plan to start printing the truth about your brother, yourself, and William Tweed's political corruption. The new editor starts printing stories that expose the lies about Jake and Jared. It will tell their true story about Jake being framed and having to leave town, how Jared went to California to find him, how they became wealthy and returned to Brooklyn to stop the crime and corruption documenting the crimes that Tweed and his gang have committed, listing the names of the people who are on Tweed's payroll, advertisements asking people with first-hand knowledge about Tweed's criminal activities to come forward and testify against him in court. Hello, Nick. I'm writing. Hello. I don't know. Oh, you. You used to go. Hi. Hello, Mr. Wilson. Well, we're not exactly living the American dream here in Brooklyn, but at least. Times change so quickly. We hope the city... Hello, sir. Yes, unfortunately that's true. In spite of Mr. Quick... This house on the corner is Leonard's house. You know... Good day, Leonard. It's nice to see you again after all this time. In case you don't recognize me, I'm Jared Wilson. I'm looking for Mr. Quayle. Do you know where he is? Good day, mister. I recognize the name, but I don't recognize you. I'm practically blind without my glasses, and I lost them outside here somewhere. I can't find them because I can't see without them. It's a fact that you don't know who you can trust these days, and I can't talk to you about Mr. Quayle if I can't see your face. 
Hello, Leonard. Look, I found your glasses in the garden. Here, try putting these on and see if you recognise me. Wait a second, they're a little bent up. There, that's much better. Hold out your hand and I'll give them to you. Oh my goodness, Jared? It's you. I am overjoyed to see you. Mr. Quail's here. He's been hiding in my basement for what seems like a coon's age. He's meeting with someone else right now, but you can come in and see him. Mr. Quail looks much older than he did when he parted ways, but looks much younger than other gentlemen you know of equal age. Mr. Quail. You see nothing important. The man is wearing a suit. You don't know why he is here. Hello, Mr. Quail. I'm so glad that we finally meet again. How are you doing? Hello, Jared. Yes, I'm also glad to see you. It's been years, but we can talk in detail later. Right now, we have very important issues to discuss. Yes, I agree. Shall we get started? I want you to meet Norman Morrison. Norman is the district attorney and he has been watching the activities of William Tweed's organization for some time. It is a pleasure to meet you. My name is Jared Wilson. I'm glad Mr. Quayle has friends like you to keep him out of trouble. We simply need some strong evidence that will prove Tweed's guilt in court. Norman is building a case against him, but he needs more hard evidence. I think I can help you. When Jake left Brooklyn, he took a container of evidence against Tweed with him. He buried it in the ground on his way west. It was safe there for all this time, and we recovered it when we came back. Jake is staying in New York City because he's still wanted by the law, and the gang would recognize him here. He will come here when Tweed's trial begins. This weatherproof box Here is the evidence we recovered. This should be enough to make the charges against Tweed stick. Here, take a look. This box contains documents Jake took from Tweed's organization and sworn affidavits from witnesses to crimes Tweed committed while Jake was working for him. Crimes like burglary, extortion, and murder. This is very good. This is what we have been hoping for. I'll prepare the indictment and then move forward. But it will take some time. Are you sure this is enough evidence? This is vital evidence for the case. But if we had current evidence from people inside Tweet's organization, it would be great if we could question someone in the gang. How is that possible? Jared, there is one policeman you can still trust. His name is Gregory Rayburn. He's a sergeant over at the police station. You can identify him by his red hair. He will know you were a friend of Mr. Quayle if you greet him by saying, I've lost my poodle hund. We all hate those animals, and it's a joke among us. You should speak with Rayburn at the police station. He may have some ideas, but his ideas are seldom without danger. Jared, are you willing to help Rayburn even if it's dangerous? Yes, I am. I will go to Rayburn. I'll see you again soon. Hello. Hello, sir. What can I do for you? I have lost my poodle hund. Oh, Jared. It must be you. Let's talk quietly so we won't be overheard. Many police officers have seen you in town. I've heard them talk about you, so I'm sure Tweed knows you're in Brooklyn. The gang will try to kill you if they can find you, and I think we can use that to lure a few of them into a trap. 
When the gang is together, they act real tough, but get them by themselves, and they're all cowards. If I can interrogate a couple of members, they'll sing like birds and give us information on Tweed's organization. I will then have enough evidence to arrest Tweed and bring him to trial. I know. The gang has been known to hang out in the hardware store. Give me and my men a one-minute head start, and then go to Rand's hardware store. We will go to the park near the gazebo and hide. Tell the clerk your name and take care of your business there, and then go to the park and stay near the gazebo. Some of Tweed's gang may follow you. If they catch you before you get to the park, they will kill you, and we won't be there to help you. Good luck, Jared. That guy looks like a troublemaker. Hi, my name is Jared Wilson. Do you remember me, Rand? Jared? Is it really you? How many years has it been since you left? Yes, it is me. It's been a long time. If my count is correct, it's been about 20 years. I hope you're doing all right. Yes, I'm all right. But as you can see, we're going through some hard times here in Brooklyn. But I think we'll pull through. If I could do it all over again, I would have gone to California when you did. Did you hear that? That's Jared Wilson, the guy Boss Tweed told us about. He told us to kill him when we see him. Let's follow him. Hey Rand, it occurred to me after I left for California that I may have left an outstanding balance. Will you check for me? Sure. Let me get the old book out. It's kind of dusty. Whew. Wow, Jared, there is an outstanding balance. It isn't much, though. It says $12.86 is owed. Here, please take this $100 and keep the change for your trouble. Please accept my apologies for the late payment. Thank you, Jared. Apology accepted. Are you sure about keeping the change? That is a large sum of money. Thank you, Rand. Yes, please believe me, I can afford it. Wow, now I'm sure I should have gone to California with you. Hi. Chair? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Here. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Thank you, Jared. In the name of the law, stop and put your hands up. We hereby arrest you. Come on, you're on our side. Not anymore. We're cleaning up this town. It would be best for you to tell the chief all about your boss, Tweed. You're free to go, Jared. We'll haul these thugs to the station when the... You're free to go, Jack.
That guy looks like a troll. The wrought iron fence does its best. Thank you for coming, Jared. It's really good to see. Hello. Hi, Jared. I think it's better. There was. So do I call my mother in there? Hi. It's nothing like it was when the gold rush was on, and you and half the town wanted to travel overland to California, but even the local traffic is almost non-existent due to the weak economy. With all of the crime, business owners can't afford to move their product in or out of Brooklyn. I was going to close my doors for good, but now I have a little hope that things will improve because of you. This door is closed. Hello, Nicholas. I'm writing new. Hello. Okay. Please send it to Jake Wilson, Kara, and what is the message you want me to send? Please write, come to Brooklyn. The trial will begin soon. This trial has been going for over a week. Many citizens respond to the articles in the newspaper and have come forward to testify against Tweed. The prosecutor presented all of the evidence Jake and Jared recovered from Fort Laramie and it was entered into the court record. Even members of Tweed's gang testified and actually told the truth. The jury has been attentive and taking notes. When the prosecution rested their case, the defense called only a few witnesses. The rumor was that many of the defense witnesses backed out for some reason just before taking the stand. The few that did take the stand were discredited during the prosecution's cross-examination. Just this morning, the defense rested their case and the closing arguments were heard. The jury went into deliberation and reported to the bailiff they had a verdict after only one and a half hours. The jury is back in the courtroom now and everyone is waiting for the judge to return. Hello, Jared and Mr. Quayle. How nice it is to finally talk to you. I've been following the trial from a distance, but now I want to hear the verdict for myself. Welcome home, Jake. I'm glad you came. The trial has gone very well for our side. I'm full of hope. Order. Order in the court. This court will come to order. The court is hearing the case of the State of New York versus William Tweed. It has been reported that the jury has reached a verdict. Will the foreman of the jury please stand? Has the jury come to a unanimous verdict on all of the charges against William Tweed? Yes, Your Honor, we have. May I see the verdict?
Very well. Please return this to the foreman. Mr. Foreman, please read the jury's verdict to each charge. Your Honor, for the charge of forgery, we, the jury, find the defendant, William Tweed, guilty of forgery as charged in count one of the indictment. For the charge of extortion, we, the jury, find the defendant, William Tweed, guilty of extortion as charged in count two of the indictment. For the charge of larceny, we, the jury, find the defendant, William Tweed, Guilty of larceny, as charged in count three of the indictment. For the charge of murder, we, the jury, find the defendant, William Tweed, guilty of the murder of Colin McKenzie in the first degree, since it was committed in the act of robbing a warehouse on June 23, 1839, as charged in count four of the indictment. Mr. Tweed, you have been found guilty of all four counts against you in the indictment. Do you have anything to say before sentencing? No. You have me dead to rights. Very well. You have waived your right for a final statement. Mr. Tweed, for counts one, two, and three, forgery, extortion, and larceny, this court sentences you to three consecutive prison terms of 20 years in the state penitentiary. That is 60 years total. For count four, murder in the first degree, this court sentences you to serve another consecutive prison term of life in the state penitentiary. The police chief has informed me that he is a warrant to arrest Jake Wilson for the murder of Colin McKenzie in 1839 and must take him into custody. However, since the jury's verdict found William Tweed guilty of that murder, I am hereby ruling Jake Wilson is innocent of this crime and am ordering his immediate release. This case is closed. Well, Jared, you did a good job here in Brooklyn. I knew you could do it. Congratulations. Thank you, Jake. I just have one more thing I want to say. Welcome home, brother. Welcome home. Soul points. Um, picked up a, uh, um, shoe horse, uh, horseshoe. I didn't do anything with it, that's the only thing I can even think. Let's watch the credits. I enjoyed it. I went through this game quick from never having played it before. It's a bit tedious at times, for sure. Um, and they spent too much time on the train. I love they used um, the same sort of point score that they did back in the day. Um, if not the s same, something very similar. So I love that. Thanks everybody for watching. I think this is repeating. <laughs>